Hi there, hope you're well. In the workshop this week, well, I'm going to go through my 11 routers on the shelves behind me, which caused so much consternation in a recent video. That's coming up next. And welcome back. Yes, so when I did the workshop makeover videos recently, I've never had so many comments about the routers. Lots of sort of finger wagging. You, you shouldn't have so many routers. You're, you're, you're just too lazy to change bits. And there's an element of that, sure. But there's an element of efficiency as well. This is what I do for a living. And it makes a lot of sense for me to have a relatively cheap resource like a router set up to a single task. I've talked to quite a few people about this in the last couple of weeks as well, and the guys in it, who are in the business, and this is what I did for a living, all say much the same thing. It makes perfect sense to have a router set up for a specific task if that's something you do regularly. Uh, but I thought I'd just go quickly through the 11 routers that I've got here. Um, I've only got 11 on the shelves because the other two are fixed in a bench or in the CNC. So yeah, just the 11. I'll go through those very quickly and explain why I've got them. Start at the very beginning. That's a very good place to start. Uh, this is the first router that I ever bought. Uh, this is a half inch router. It is Performance Power Pro brand. And if you saw my 10 tools that I wish I had starting out, uh, you will know that this is the first one that I bought because I was doing a lot of, well, when I first job I did involve kitchen worktops and I needed a half inch router and this was available relatively cheaply. It's from a company called B&Q which is a little bit like Home Depot, Home Depot here in the UK. Big box store, not not disastrous but not great. And this got me started. This is the one that I could afford. It got me going in half inch routers. This got me the work that enabled me to buy the other tools. Um, it's not particularly great. Um, there's a little bit of run out on it. But obviously over time, I've it's been replaced by better routers and it just became relegated to this sort of shelf trimming jig. Uh, and that's what it still does perfectly well, time after time. So moving on, a little quarter inch laminate trimmer router. This is by Elu. Uh, Elu became purchased by Black & Decker. Uh, eventually in the 80s, I think. Um, I bought this because uh, around about the time that the Festool MK500, the horizontal trimmer, came out, this was uh, uh, came, came up on eBay, I think, and I bought it used, I think it's from the 1970s, I'm not totally sure, uh, and it's designed for trimming laminate, so for mica-type laminate, but I converted it at one time to a horizontal trimmer because I wanted to try. I was doing a lot of thin, thin lipping, on, again, on shelves. I'm not done much uh, recently and I've just kind of held on to it because it's not eating any corn and I thought I might try it in my CNC it's about the right size it's 600 watts and it's it's actually quite a nice motor on it so we'll give that a go and we'll see if it works out so next a uh, cheap little Hitachi quarter inch router uh, and I bought this just to be uh, dedicated to a hinge jig at a time when I was hanging a lot of doors. It just made sense to have a, a, a jig and a guide bush and a router set up just to do hinges. You know, if you're doing half a dozen doors a day, then having a hinge jig just makes it really easy to do. Bought this really cheaply off eBay, secondhand. It's, it's not worth getting rid of. You know, this one hasn't been used very recently because I've not hung many doors recently, and I found other ways to do the hinges. But, you know, why why bother getting rid of it? It, it does get used periodically, and I'm glad I've got it, and I'm certainly glad I had it when I was using it a lot. So I'm going to pop these two together. This is the Trend T3. Again, that was following on from the uh, Hitachi. I bought that. I think I bought that as a refurb. Didn't pay more than about... 30 or 35 pounds for it. And again, it was just a good little general purpose quarter inch router. And over time, I replaced that with a T4. Um, it's useful. It was useful sometimes to have two routers that have the same base on them. So you could have different cutters in each router, but use the base. Uh, if you're using jigs and things, uh, it was very handy. Both of these have been stripped down previously uh, out of their plunge bases to use in other sort of jigs. I had this uh, and again in, a, in another uh, shelf trimming type jig and I've put it back in a plunge base, Pun plunge base given to me by uh, Patreon supporter Gavin. Thanks Gav. Because I'm going to use this with the 8mm uh, peanut cutter 
and have that as a dedicated system because I want to see how efficient it is getting you know a, a dedicated machine with the cutter and the jig and, and seeing how quick it is to use because again you know, it's one of those things uh, the when I did the peanut jig videos a lot of people said oh it looks fussy but you know if you have the whole thing set up and ready to go then that makes a lot more sense and if you've invested in the jig and the cutter and everything else then a relatively cheap router like this one or others may well do the job but those two trend T3 and T4 great little routers did all kinds of work with these and the money that I earned from that helped me buy other tools so this is my first big heavyweight proper router. This is a Festool OF2000. I bought this to replace the B&Q one uh, because I wanted a good quality machine and this is the one that ended up, you know, every, pretty much anybody with a, with a workshop will have a half inch router with a 30 mil guide bush. And it was, it's always centered, it's you know, been centered with a mandrel. Perhaps a little bit indulgent to have a router like this set up like that but it makes sense if you do a lot of that kind of work it's not all kitchen work up work um, but anything that needs a 30 mil guard bush and a half inch half inch router that was the one and it you know it's it's still going strong and still serving me well uh, i don't use half inch routers handheld that much but you know when i do it was almost always this one <laughs> unless of course it was this one uh, trends t11 Again, it didn't have a great deal of specific use for this when I got it, but it's become the, when I got the big peanut jig, it's become the main router for that. Needed a particular low profile guide bush on it, which is why I've got the universal base on it. If you need that kind of thing, then it makes sense while I'm doing that kind of work to have everything set up and ready to go. It's not just for jobby job type work. This is getting into video work as well, because I, you know, if I'm doing video about something i don't want to start having to spend a couple of hours swapping the bases out and getting the guide bush in and finding the right guide bush and all that sort of thing it's about efficiency not just for doing the woodworking but for making the videos as well uh, nice router the t11 very good uh, i've got a big old triton in the bench and i may swap these around at some point at some point because this one has above above table adjustment which my older triton doesn't but so uh, yeah nice big solid half inch plunge router so now we're coming down to the quarter inch routers this was my first festool router bought this a long long time ago it's the old of 900 and i've got this now dedicated to the lr32 system if you've seen me put any shelf pin holes into a wardrobe or uh, even making the uh, mft tops it'll be this router that's done that uh, i'm you know very happy to have had the work that's enabled me to dedicate a router like this and have a dedicated setup like this because it is extremely convenient if you've got to work your way through three or four wardrobes worth of shelf pin holes it's much easier just to be able to grab on off the shelf and get cracking And then this is the little Festool OF1010, same sort of single-handed style as the OF900 and the bigger 1400. Uh, this is like the OF2000 was, this is the, the general quarter inch and 8mm workshop router. Uh, I really like it. it, it works really well, it's a, it's a very nice single-handed router. And I do like it because it works extremely well with the guide rail system. If you have it on the on the rods set up with a guide rail, you can do sort of straight cuts with very easy and very precise stop and start points. So for fluting, uh, for fascias, for example, it's great for that sort of work. Mm. And got plenty of power as well for a relatively small router. Really, really like these. Uh, I, I'm <laughs> looking at all these again. It makes me want to. Get an OF1400, which is like a slightly bigger version of this in half inch, but uh, probably got enough routers. And then we come to the two palm routers. Uh, I bought this one. This is an Aldi Work Zone quarter inch palm router. Uh, I bought this to do a review of. I've got a, I've got the Katsu. I said earlier, I think I've got a Katsu in the CNC next door. 
Uh, and I bought this because these are you know, almost embarrassingly cheap. I think they were 23 quid or something. Uh, and I bought it just to, to try it and to do a review of it. And then they changed the name from Work Zone to Ferex, which <laughs> meant you know, there's not much point in doing a, re a review of something that you can't buy anymore. So I ended up just putting a flush trim bit in it. Uh, and that's what I use it for. Um, but it works great. does exactly everything that I've asked from it. Uh, and this is one that I've just bought. This is the cordless Katsu. I don't know anything about cordless routers. I've never used one uh, before, so I thought I'd buy it and give it a try. I've got the plunge base for this because I quite fancy seeing if you can use this for the, uh, the smaller peanut cutter. Uh, I want to try it and give it a go. This is, you know, kind of what what we do now and that buying tools you don't necessarily need but you just want to try them out because they might make an interesting video. So there we are that's my little whistle stop tour around my router. I'll call it a selection not a collection because a collection implies that it's somehow special and all I do is dust them down and in reality nothing could be further than the truth they're just on the shelf for easy access and they've got lights behind them because I just wanted something to look pretty when I'm doing these talking head type videos but they are absolutely all working tools and they do all get well used with the possible exception of the Elu uh, laminate trimmer and as I said I hang onto, the, hang onto that because I've got plans for it so yeah that's my router selection um, let me know what yours is like let me know if you've got that many or even more I'd love to hear from you uh, that's it for this week though thanks ever so much for watching uh, thanks as always to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members and their endless patience they have seen a version of this video before uh, but that's it for this week thanks for watching uh, stay safe take care and I'll see you next time Thank <laughs> you.